I hope everything was to your satisfaction. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would just calm yourself. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder, and if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank. Or England's currency, there, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it'd certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. I'm warning you. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Avalon. Fitters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? It would be impossible. They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we've got the printing plates, it's all real cash. Fair point. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all.
go. Come on. There you are. Easy now. Keep your eyes open. Anyone could be trying to get in. Yes, sir. Keep this place locked down. I wonder who she's hiding from. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. <laughs> Now to sneak these back into the bank.
She's hiding. Why is she hiding? Get her! Get back here. Pulling the trigger on her. like the looks of her. Keep at her! There, as if they were never taken. Well, the London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. All right. 
I'd be. Who are you and what's your game? Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. Is that a call? If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call... You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and... Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny. Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody studs. How dare you, sir? Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. B, I presume.
Pleasure to meet you. B. B! My name's Herbert! Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... Smug bastard. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is, you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. <laughs> girl. Oh! <laughs> 
What's the meaning of this? Who the devil are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment. All this. Not so fast, Your Excellency. Man, he will pay for this. Thank you. What do you intend to do about Gladstone, young man? I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. 
A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, 8 o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day!